Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vinyl Vinyl Vlog. I have a gnarly tooth thing going on. It stinks, like, pain-wise. But thanks to Chris and NVNM Productions, respect New Jersey, or prepare for eternal combat. Yep. We have the new Blasphematory on cassette, The Lower Catacombs. This is actually on its way here on 12 inches of wax as we speak. I just checked my uh, USPS this morning and saw that I had a package coming from Hopewell, New Jersey, and was like, I know what that is. Yes, so stoked because now I really, really, really was looking forward to Depths of the Obscurity. This is the demo tape. Like, I remember being so stoked the last time uh, I saw Massive Retaliation. They also played with Siege Column at uh, the last uh, Starlight Festival, or whatever it was called, I'm sorry. But when the full length of Depths of the Obscurity came out, I still listened to the demo. But when the full length dropped, oh my god. It was like a love letter to Gourmet with that just underground I don't know how else to explain it like NVM style of death metal and it's just amazing and that was Depths of the Obscurity which also got the vinyl treatment courtesy of Nuclear Winter Records which is Dead Congregation's record label so it makes fucking sense because Blasphematory, in my opinion, are probably one of the best modern American death metal bands. And I mean that, like, 100%. And I think that the fact, you know, a lot of people that I know knew, know absolutely nothing that, like, Altar of Gore, Siege Column, and all that is connected to, like, NVNM. Burial Stone, DSS, The Gauntlet, etc., etc. But I can't wait to hear this beast on 12 inches of wax. Holy shit. Like, I knew I was in for a treat, but... Like, come on. Tom, Joe, and Chris just absolutely knocked this one out of the fucking ballpark. The production's sick. I fucking love the keyboards when they use the keyboards. Like, it's just the perfect amount and stuff, like... But the riffing on here is fan-fucking-tastic. The vocals, amazing. And, you know, to me, anytime you have a project with, like, Joe Aversnio, you're getting something special. Like, every performance I feel that Joe puts in is 120%. And I feel the same way almost about every NVNM release, like, honestly, like, because I remember they were one of the first in, like, my life and in modern times, aside from Head Split Records, like, NVNM, when it comes to East Coast shit, they were, you know, in my opinion, pretty much running... New Jersey, but in a very low-key type of way, you know, doing limited releases, 
Like, for example, and I consider these essential. I honestly wish I had more, but I just have volume five of New Jersey Attack Metal. Like, DIY as fuck and extremely, extremely limited. But, like, this is, um, you know, to me, the best way to find out about, you know, NVNM bands is to physically listen to them. Like, Apex Winter, I think, is one of the best U.S. black metal bands just based off of this little demo right here. Yep, NVNM Productions, Apex Winter, Demo 2021. Picks up right where, like, Death Fortress left off. And if you don't know Death Fortress, go check out Death Fortress. I have a couple videos going over two of my favorite Death Fortress records. But, like, on this compilation, if you've never heard any of these bands, you get The Gauntlet, Altar of Gore, Blasphematory, A New Burial Stone Song, and Apex Winter. And I think that's awesome. Taste our New Jersey steel. And like I said, DIY as fuck. And I love this part. This, there's a spoken word part right here. <laughs> So good. On a real nice blue hard shell windowless tape. But to me, the Lower Catacombs is definitely blasphematory at their finest. And the Lower Catacombs, and again, if you know NVNM, then you know that this was recorded at the Dungeon with No End in New Brunswick, New Jersey. But mastered by the mighty Dan Lowndes at Renaissance Sound Studio. And it fucking shows. Like, somebody mentioned to me, like, hey, uh, are you in, like, like, why are you so into production? And it's fucking important. That's why, like, you should be interested in production, especially if you're in a band. Like, you don't want to hand your, you know, demo that you worked, like, nine months on over to some kid that's only worked on like emo and metalcore releases like i've been in that situation where it's like well we can go to the death metal guy or we can take this deal and go with this you know kid that has a two inch zipper on his girl pants and listens to the blood brothers <laughs> I mean, whatever, but, like, I remember, like, I was recording the vocals for, like, our, like, the first Skeleton Proof Tanks record, and I was like, this, is, nah, like, this is not, like, and the thing was, like, he did such a good job on the promo that I was like, you know what, fucking A, like, let's use him. He did a great job, because, like, I gave him a couple of, like, I... I burned him a CD. This was 2005. So I burned him a CD with some of our influences on it. And I was like, look, like, this is what we want it to sound like. And he nailed the demo. I mean, he nailed the promo. But when it came time to record the full length, he had no fucking idea what he was doing. And our record label at the time, like, they almost scrapped it. And we're going to reissue our, like, EP, which I kind of wish we would have done, honestly, because 
conflagration something I kind of denounce. Like, I don't really, I, I always tell people, ignore that. Like, I don't, you know, I was 19. It was my second time in a recording studio. Like, we worked with somebody that didn't know what they were doing. And, I mean, he knew what he was doing because he nailed that promo track of Elliot Spencer. Elliot Spencer, if you did not know, is Pinhead's uh, real name, if I remember my hell uh, razor lore correctly. But, um, yeah, that whole song was written about hell, hell razor and whatnot. But just look at that cover art. It's gorgeous. I know it's kind of hard to see. I'm trying to see who did the... Uh, artwork and that is Alex Herman. Hell yeah. Look at that. And this is just absolutely grade A American death metal with a little bit of gourmet worship. Not as much as Depths of the Obscurity. This is more just blasphematory who have absolutely developed their own sound, but there's still parts on here that, you know, like, go into abhorrence territory a little bit, and, like, that's fine, like, right here. Like, sounds like somebody got caught in a vortex a little bit in the best way possible. But definitely one of my favorite death metal bands, period. Blasphematory. And I can't recommend, sorry, I can't recommend the Lower Catacombs enough. This is available on CD, vinyl, cassette. Cassette might be sold out, but hey, it's worth a shot. This is so fucking good. Like, legit top shelf death metal. Trend free. Trust me. This is as legit as it fucking gets. Just absolutely top shelf death metal. This is like the AK-47 of 2007. If you know what I'm talking about, yeah, it's that fucking good. It's like smoking some AK from NYC back in 2007. If you knew where to get it from. And holy shit, that, man, that used to just... Be a good time. But I heard, you know, those genetics are lost and that original strain no longer exists. But, yeah, if you're a fan of death metal, you can't go wrong with blasphematory. Especially the lower catacombs. But I also... You know, I'm gonna suggest starting at the demo. And the demo is titled the same as the full length, so don't let that confuse you. And it kind of has a similar design, but this is hand drawn. I love that fucking low. Like, I, I love their logo, period. I really would kill for some blasphematory merch. I don't know if they've even ever made a t-shirt. That's what I mean. Like, they keep it fucking real. And what I mean by that is, like, it's pretty hard to get your hands on, like, some alter gore shirts and stuff. Like, and I think that's kind of fucking cool. Because it just keeps it, like, underground. And I know some of you are like, yeah, but, like, I wanted to get a copy and it sold out, like. That shit's a bummer, but, like, it happens. It's because, you know, there is a heavy demand 
for NVNM releases, especially from Blasphematory, Siege Column, and Altar of Gore. Like, I have this on vinyl as well, thanks to Nameless Grave Records and NVNM Productions. Hails to Joe for sending that bad boy over. Obscure and Obscene Gods, the debut full length. This is the promo tape. An advanced copy of the album when they played their first show ever with Cerebral Rot and Fetid. And in my opinion, stole the fucking show. Then the full length came out. It took a little bit for the vinyl release, but luckily I had the NVNM version. And the demo. This is actually the second press reissue. I got a real sick number. Number two out of 25. That's the thing. Like, to me, I really wish that was like one out of 150. Just so more people out there could get their hands on this. Because the Alter of Gore demo is so fucking good. Like, the full line's awesome, but there's just something about that demo. And it's a self-titled demo. But there's just something about it. Like, especially uh, just everything. It, it's just so fucking good. Hails to the acolyte of foul ones. But Altar of Gore, self-titled demo. Essential listening, folks. For real. And then there's like Burial Stone, Massive Retaliation, like, yeah. But when it comes to Blasphematory, I'm going to have to recommend the Lower Catacombs. This is a top shelf pleaser of a record. And so is Depths of the Obscurity. And so is the demo version of Depths of the Obscurity. Because Blasphematory fucking rules. So, if you can get your hands on these releases, do it. Like, trust me. Devastating, amazing, just top-notch fucking death metal. Thank you to Chris and NBNM. Listen to Blasphematory, the Lower Catacombs. And as always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule. Hey.